Hello, welcome. I am Suzanne Lynn. I'm so glad that you're here. You're going to be joining me with uh, author Helen Walleman, who wrote a very interesting book. It's called A Visit to Gansu Province for the Chinese New Year. Hello, Helen. Hello, Susan. Nice to see you. We are so excited about getting to, to know the heart behind your book. Um, and I'd love for you to start off by sharing a little bit about your rich history of travel. Well, I started off being born in England of Swiss parents, which of course made me a bit international. But after going to school and university in Britain, I decided I never wanted to be a teacher and went into publishing rather by chance, first of all in Munich in Germany, where I was for a year. And then I went to Paris for several months, also working in publishing before going to London where I worked mm -hmm. for several years for very good publishers. And then I met my husband who went to Switzerland and worked there. And then how did China get into it, right? My next question. <laughs> yeah. I just wanted to go somewhere rather exotic mm. and see if I could manage to survive in a different civilization, really. So in 1989, I took a year's leave unpaid and went to teach English at a Chinese university. And since then, China's been part of my life. And the time I went uh, for that book, that was 2002 to three. Helen, would you do us a favor as we start the interview off? Would you just share a sentence or two in Chinese? Aha, yes, I can do that because there might perhaps be some Chinese people listening. Yes. So, we are sure. Uh, I begin to forget my Chinese. You're doing much better than I could do. So, you should be jump up on your shirt. I can see them in the yohao, them in the reaching, uh, reaching, come down, come die. Yes. So, that's just to say that I wanted to thank my Chinese friends for their friendship and for their hospitality because they put up with me. <laughs> <laughs> it's a difficult language, isn't it? It is difficult, yes. Yeah. Yeah. I'm afraid so. I never ever be very good at it, but I could get through. Uh, clearly, and you had quite a trip to, to China. Let's go ahead and just start looking at some of these pictures. And if you're listening to this on the radio and you don't have accessibility to the, the videos, um, well, that's more reason for you to buy the book so you can see these great pictures. I'll try to describe them the best I can. The The first picture we're looking at is it says the house that you lived in. And it looks like it's a, a brick house. It's larger than what I think the stereotypical home would be that we see in China. Yes, well, it's a farmhouse built around a courtyard. You can see the big portico for the entrance. Yes. And uh, that's where I lived for three weeks. And is that, the best room. is that an outside bathroom, Helen? It is indeed, oh. a, a dry one. Mm. But they don't really have that much water. And they didn't have running water there yet. They had it the year after. But they had to go and collect the water in the village. Wow. And we think that we have it bad sometimes. <laughs> and now the next picture we're looking at looks like a bed. And I have to say it looks like a box. It's a, it's a, it's a rectangle and it looks very hard. It was hard, but it was heated, which was mm -hmm. really very good because uh, that plateau on which, uh, the, where I was, that's 5,000 feet ab above sea level. So mm. it was very cold and they don't have central heating. They don't have stoves or hardly any. They just heat the beds. And in every room, there's a bed like that. It's called a kang. And if when you go and visit people, you just take off your shoes, keep your coat and hat on, jump on the bed and get under the quilt. <laughs> That's my <laughs> kind of place. I think yes. that sounds pretty good. Yes. And, and I want to keep moving on to the pictures, but I'm interested. How do they heat it? Is it the box underneath the bed that has? Uh, yes, it gets. In, it? in this part of China, they heated them with straw from corn, English oh, wow. call it maize. 
Wow. And that is just smoldering. And of course, as it's with bricks, they keep warm. Oh, sure. Now we're looking at a courthouse with a gathering of people. Yes, these are caves. Oh, those so are the caves. That, that is the caves. You can see their, their doorways yes. in, the, in the cliff. And that's the loess. It's very fine earth that sticks. And they can dig out caves there. And wow. each of those doors leads into one room. So when you come out from a room, you, there's no corridor. You always come out onto the courtyard. Very interesting. All right, we've got to move on. I see a beautiful picture of family gathering around a table with um, lots of food. That's it. They've just prepared uh, food for the wedding and now they're quite tired. So they've moved in and uh, you can see the arched ceiling that's mm -hmm, inside beautiful. the cave. It's been newly painted because there's... Oh. <laughs> so so when nice you say white... Normally, when you say you live in a cave, you're not thinking about things that have architectural st structure and and beautiful painted walls. So yeah, this now, is man-made cave, you see. Yes. Yes. It's very nice. Now, this next picture, and I'm telling you, you've got to get this book because the pictures are just marvelous. Is this a bride? That's right. Yes. You see, she's wearing red. Because I red is the picture of joy and white is worn for funerals. White no. is no color, so that's death, isn't it? Oh, very interesting. Now, the next picture, it looks like, well, it looks like the people are dressed up, perhaps celebrating the wedding. Uh, is, it, is that the bride the and the bridegroom? Um, I see people eating. Oh, yes, they're eating. That's the banquet. Mm -hmm. And that's the first picture we saw of the caves. People were preparing the food. Okay. About 200 people came to this wedding. That's a large wedding. Yes. Very yes. large wedding. And now we see uh, a large gathering of people. It looks almost like a flea market with it's, some quilts in the front. And yeah. um, they're it's not a flea quite, market. It's not a it's, flea market. <laughs> no, it's the proper market, which takes place every four days. It's a small market town, really. Uh, every four days, it's not the same day every week because they still go by the lunar calendar there. So okay. they don't have weeks. They just have months. So it'll be seven times a month. But you can still buy products. It's still an exchange of goods. Oh, yes. It's a proper market. Yes. Yes. Wow. As you know, as an American, I'm seeing things through my eyes and I'm like, well, that must be a flea market. <laughs> <laughs> now, this is a lovely picture. This looks like it might be a picture of rice that we've never seen before in it's, bundles. Uh, it's noodles, rice noodles. noodles, yes. And the thing is that in that area, they don't have much rice. And we hardly ever had rice while I was there. It's a bit of a luxury because it's too dry. But as it was the Chinese New Year, they sold these noodles. Uh, but the, otherwise, they have noodles made of wheat. Okay. And they make them themselves usually. Very nice. Yes. And the final picture that we have time for, it looks like uh, some people that are walking down the street, but they have masks on. And this was well before COVID. Why are they wearing <laughs> yeah. masks? In China, they often wear masks, partly to keep their noses warm and partly to keep out the dust because it's very dusty. That loess is very fine earth wow. and it gets blown around. Helen, I wish that we had so much more time, but so what, is the, what is the overall <laughs> message that you want people to take away from your book, your wonderful book that you wrote? Well, I think that instead of being just a tourist, going and staying with people, staying there longer, going several times, knowing a bit, at least a bit of the language is so much more rewarding. And then you really see your own life with other eyes. That is so absolutely true. What a beautiful way to say it. Uh, we're talking to Helen Walliman about her book, A Visit to Gansu Province for the Chinese New Year. Helen, thank you so much. Can you share with us where it's available? Oh, you can get it by, it's only an email book. You can get it by any email retailers. 
in America and all over the world. Thank you so much for joining us. And I just highly recommend if you could just take a few minutes to look through the book A Visit to Gansu Province for the Chinese New Year by Helen Wallam. And the pictures are amazing. Her story is fantastic. And we think that you'd really enjoy it. Thank you for joining us.